Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today we're going to be taking a look at Samsung's all new Galaxy S4 flagship smartphone and Apple's iPhone 5. We're going to be comparing the two and going over some of the strong points of each of these two phones. But first of all, before we begin, I just wanted to say, remember guys, these are just two smartphones, nothing more. There's really no reason to get heated. And let me also say that these, in my opinion, are the two best smartphones on the market right now. So if I say that one is better than the other one, in a certain aspect or area, just be sure to remember that that is either my opinion or that simply because it performs better. Right off the bat, you'll notice that the Samsung Galaxy S4 has a super AMOLED 5 inch screen that has a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and a pixel density of 441 pixels per inch. Whereas the iPhone 5 simply has a 4 inch display with a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. So yes, the Samsung Galaxy S4 has a higher pixel density than the Retina display on Apple's iPhone 5. Now really quick, for those of you who don't know, a Retina display is a term coined by Apple that simply means, in theory, the display has more pixels per inch than the human eye can process when used at an average distance. So text looks incredibly crisp on the iPhone 5 and you won't be able to see any pixelation. With that said though, there are obviously devices that have a higher pixel density than the iPhone 5 one of them being the Samsung Galaxy S4, and let me just say that its display is absolutely incredible. Now before we get into some comparison photos, let me go ahead and just show you guys that the brightness on both of these devices is approximately the same. It's a little less than half. So as you can see, we have the brightness slider here on the iPhone 5 and on the Galaxy S4. So I got it as close as I possibly could. All right, and now let's go ahead and compare those images. So I'm gonna open up photos on the iPhone 5 and downloads on the Samsung Galaxy S4, and we're just going to start from the top. So here is the first image. Those of you who are Apple fans may actually recognize this as one of the images they promote with the Retina MacBook Pro. So let me go ahead and zoom in here on both of these devices, and it looks absolutely incredible on both of them. Now because the Samsung Galaxy S4 has a super amp OLED display. In person, for me at least, it looks a lot brighter than the iPhone 5's display, even though they're at about the same brightness setting. And also, before I go over my analysis of these images, let me just say, it won't look exactly the same for you, and you might not be able to pick it up, because of course you are watching it on your own device's display after I've already recorded it. So I'm just going to give my impressions and observations. Now, one thing that I really like about the Samsung Galaxy S4 is just how far you can actually zoom in. Now, when I do zoom in this far, clearly it doesn't look fantastic, but that's not the point. On the iPhone 5, you can only zoom in so far, so that's about as far as I can go. Let me go ahead and bring it to about the same on the Samsung Galaxy S4, and right off the bat, colors do look more vivid on the Galaxy S4's Super AMOLED display than on the iPhone 5's Retina display. All right, let's go ahead and go to our next image. And same thing goes for this one. It is more vivid on the Samsung Galaxy S4. However, either one looks great. They're just different. So on the iPhone 5, most people would say that it looks more realistic because on the S4, colors really pop off the display. And again, I'm not really going to repeat myself too much here, but on display types similar to the one found on the S4, blacks are supposed to look deeper, but for some reason they definitely appear better on the iPhone 5 in this image. And actually just looking at the display on my camera right here, it appears that the S4 looks slightly more washed out even though they're at the same brightness. And let me just say, it doesn't look that way in person. All right, next we're gonna take a look at the images captured on both of these devices. So taking a look at this first image, which was captured with the S4's 13 megapixel rear facing camera and the iPhone 5's 8 megapixel rear facing camera is that colors captured with the iPhone 5's camera are definitely more vivid than the colors captured on the S4's camera. However, with that said, the S4 does a really great job at capturing close up subjects like this flower, for instance, and you can really zoom in and get incredible detail on the S4 that you just can't get on the iPhone 5. So if you're looking for brighter and more realistic colors, iPhone 5 is definitely the way to go, whereas if you're looking for detail and crisper images, you definitely want to go with the Samsung Galaxy S4. However, with that said, typically most customers aren't looking at the camera as the only feature of the smartphone when they go to buy it. So let me just go ahead and switch on over to this next image here. You can really tell the difference in color between these two. The greens are absolutely over-exaggerated on the Galaxy S4's display, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, it just doesn't 
doesn't look as realistic. And again, same thing here with the greens in this image. All right, let me just go ahead and go over to the last one. And this is actually a really strong point for the iPhone 5's camera. I took these pictures side by side. I mean, I held the iPhone 5 directly on top of the Galaxy S4 when I was taking these pictures. So what you'll really notice here is that the S4 doesn't really do a great job when you have a lot of light or a lot of exposure in the image, whereas the iPhone 5 can definitely handle it better. It looks extremely washed out on the S4, whereas it only looks slightly washed out on the iPhone 5. So that's really where the iPhone 5's camera pulls ahead of the S4's. But again, you do get that great detail on the S4 and you're able to just zoom in on every single point of the image. All right, next we're going to be taking a look at the browser on both of these. So I'm actually going to use Google Chrome for this first set of tests. Let me just open it up on both of these phones here, and I'm just going to do a simple search. So let me go ahead and just type it out on both of these here, and once I'm done typing, I'll be right back. All right, and here we go, I have it typed out. Before I actually hit go though, I just wanted to say that again, I'm using Google Chrome on both of these and I'm connected to the exact same Wi-Fi network. So let's go ahead and hit go at the exact same time right now. All right, and the iPhone 5 definitely pulled ahead in that search. Let's see how it does when I'm actually loading up a website. Let's go ahead and just open up the top one on both of these. And as you can see, the iPhone 5 did finish first loading the mobile version of this site. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the very bottom and we're going to go ahead and switch to the regular desktop theme. Okay, so again, same thing here. The S4 was definitely fast though, and it's just finishing right now. So as far as browser speed is concerned, at least when using Google Chrome, the iPhone 5 appears to be faster. Now we aren't by any means trying to load anything too intensive, so let's go ahead and switch over to the native browsers on these two phones, and we're going to do some quick browser benchmark tests. All right, so I have Safari loaded up here on the iPhone 5, and I have the native browser on the S4. I'm actually inside of a SunSpider JavaScript test site here, and we're going to go ahead and start this test at the exact same time. And I'm just going to do that by simply holding down on Start Now, and then we're going to tap Open at the exact same time. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I'm not actually going to stick around for all of this, so I'll be right back once it finishes and we can go over the end results. All right, so the iPhone 5 just finished while we're waiting for the Samsung Galaxy S4 to complete the browser test. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in on the end scores here. We got a really impressive score on the iPhone 5 of 868 milliseconds, whereas on the S4, we have a total of 1,057 milliseconds. So that's a pretty big difference between the two. Of course, just remember, the lower the score, the better. And what's actually interesting that I found out just now is that you can't quite zoom in as far on the native browser on the S4 as you can on the iPhone 5, which is actually quite ironic because when looking at at pictures, you can zoom in significantly further on the S4 than on the iPhone 5. Anyway, that was just a quick side note. Let's go ahead and go over to our next browser test where I'm sure the S4 will pull ahead. We're just going to do a simple HTML5 test for mobile browsing on these two devices. Let's go ahead and just open up the top site there. I accidentally switched over to the other tab on the S4, but let's go ahead and go to the top site right now. All right, and even though the iPhone 5 loaded at first, the S4 has a total score of 468 points with 11 bonus points, whereas the iPhone 5 only has a score of 386 with nine bonus points, and that's out of 500, guys. So you have really great HTML5 performance on the Samsung Galaxy S4. All right, and with that said, let's go over our last test, and that's Geekbench. So right off the bat, you'll notice that the Samsung Galaxy S4 is powered by a Qualcomm quad-core processor at 1.89 gigahertz, whereas the iPhone 5 is powered by Apple's A6 processor at 1.3 gigahertz, and that's a dual core. Now on the S4, we also have two gigabytes of RAM. It registers it as 1.78 gigabytes of available RAM, whereas on the iPhone 5, we have one gig of RAM, and it registers it at about 1,000 megabytes. So let's go ahead 
ahead and run these benchmark tests. Again, same thing as before. I'm not going to stick around for this. I'll be back once they finish and we can go over the end results. So as for Geekbench, which is just a standard performance benchmark tool, the S4 completely blew the iPhone 5 away with a total score of 3,227 versus 1,658 here on the iPhone 5. And when I actually go to compare here on the S4, you'll notice that this is one of the best performing Android devices. It even outperforms the Samsung Nexus 10, which is Google and Samsung's relatively new tablet. So we have an incredible score here on the S4. You know you're getting a performance device when you purchase the S4. However, I will say that because it does run Android, unfortunately at some times it will be hindered and it will be slow in certain circumstances that leads to better performance here on the iPhone 5 than on the Galaxy S4. And now let me just go over a few things I like about each of these devices. So on the S4, we have this incredible Super AMOLED 5-inch display. I'm definitely a fan of that. I also really like how you can toggle different things inside of the notification tray here. As you can see, you can easily access different settings without actually having to go into the settings menu. And unfortunately, it's not like that on the iPhone 5 natively. Now, because this iPhone 5 is jailbroken, I do have access to different things. As you can see, I can change pretty much all the same settings here. However, the S4 does have more settings because it has additional features that I'll go over in just a second. So that's just one thing that I really do like about the S4. Also, another thing that's really awesome on the S4 is the fact that you can actually have multiple applications running on one screen simultaneously. So let me go ahead and just drag this window back open and I can drag Chrome into the bottom position here and I can run both of these at the exact same time. So this really helps as far as multitasking is concerned and that's definitely my favorite feature on the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now on the iPhone 5, in my opinion, you simply can't beat Apple's incredible cross-platform ecosystem. They've done an amazing job with iTunes getting all of your content across all of your devices. iCloud is also fantastic and it's incredibly convenient to be able to message people with iMessage and messages. Other than that, the straightforward and simplistic interface and experience on the iPhone 5 is superior, and a lot of the times the applications you get will also be superior because developers only have to develop for a small number of devices when developing for iOS, whereas when they develop for Android, most times they have to accommodate a larger number of devices, and there's just more fragmentation on Android than on iOS. Overall, though, these are two great phones, and Samsung has introduced some really interesting features with the S4 here. You don't actually have to touch the display to interact with it and you can do various things such as zoom in. Let me go ahead and just switch over to this tab right here and I'm going to merely hover my finger above the screen. You guys can't exactly tell that that's what I'm doing but it actually gives me a magnifying glass that I can move around and manipulate and it goes beyond that though but I'm not really going to go too into depth on all of the features of the S4 because it does have a lot of cool things that the iPhone 5 doesn't have. Most of them can be viewed as just novelty features though that will wear off in a matter of time. But overall, in conclusion, these are two great phones. You can't go wrong with either one of them. Keep in mind though that the iPhone 5 will be a year old come September whereas the S4 was just released, so you have brand new tech on a brand new phone. So if you wanna go with the iPhone, I highly recommend waiting until the next generation. But if you wanna go with an Android device, definitely get the Samsung Galaxy S4. All right, and I hope you guys liked this video. Don't forget to rate it up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section to enter to win in my new $100 Amazon gift card giveaway. Once your comment's posted, you'll be automatically entered to win. All right, and that's it for this video, guys. Don't forget you can be updated more often by simply liking me on Facebook and following me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.